Shalom. Given all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweshai, Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the brothers pushing this truth, show the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now, more soon than ever, to the scattered. The speckled bird Israelites will be scattered among the heathen. I say Shalom, and I say Shalom unto the few and faithful Aquat, the sisters, listening and learning. This is your brother Yerushalayim from GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp. Out of Trinidad and Tobago, coming at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakudash. All right. Now this um video, um through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai will be as the start of a small series. Of videos I'm gonna do on um debunking Islam, you know, and showing that um that Islam is just another one of um another another religion of the heathen, alright? You know, and that Israelites, you know, are not Muslims, you know, and they really they could never be Muslims. Alright? So this will be part one of the series. I'm just gonna go through some basics here and mainly um scriptural proof. That the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel, all right, not Ishmael, all right. And as a com common misconception, all right. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the um, go to a chart. You know, basically a lineage, a, a tree, family tree. You know, to show the um, the breakdown of where um. Of where the where the Ishmaelites came from and where Israel came from. So we have a top Abraham, which represents Abraham. Alright. And right below that we have Hagar. You know, and below Hagar with Ishmael. So Abra Abraham had Ishmael through Hagar, as we know through the scriptures. And he had twelve sons, as promised from the Lord. Alright, twelve princes. And then we have Sarah, you know. Who, who the um, promise came through, you know, the son, to had a son, Ish, um, I, Isaac. You have Ishak here, you know. Alright? And, and through Isaac came Jacob, who became Israel in 12 tribes there, thereby, you know. So, it's a whole other, other lineage. Alright? This just shows a whole other lineage. Let me see if I can, um, let me see if I can find another thing. Another um, family tree. Family If I can use this here. All right, here we go. So from here, you can see much more clearly. This is Abraham at the top. All right, you know he had he had um children with Keturah, Hagar, and Sarah, because Hagar was the Egyptian slave girl who Ishmael came through. All right, but it, but you know we all know that the, the promise didn't go through. Ishmael, but through Isaac, right? You know, and through Isaac, you know, married Rebecca, and then they had Jacob and Esau, you know, and then the twelve tribes came out of Jacob, which is chosen lineage, all right? So, um, with that said, I'm gonna go to the book from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor, and we're gonna read about the birth of Islam, all right? So let's go to page 44. Yeah, page 44. The birth of Islam. So I'm going to read and skip through. So you all get the idea. Right, this is the birth of Islam. Uh, it reads, At the time of the birth of Muhammad, what were the international events or conditions operating? The answer to this question is, necess is necessary for the comprehension of the rapid emergence of the Mohammedan Empire. The Roman Empire at the birth of Muhammad was divided into two parts, the Western Empire, right, which is the, um, the pagan Roman Empire, right, and uh, with the capital at Rome, and the Byzantine Empire, which was Jake's, right, you know, with the capital at Constantinople, that's what was called the Holy Roman Empire, because Jake was running the Byzantine Empire, all right, which is, which is the Eastern Empire. And this was the um and this was prophesied 
um, in the book of Daniel, all right, when he, with the statue, the big statue, where the feet of um, the feet of iron and miry clay, all right, iron represent the old Roman Empire who mainly use iron, and the clay represent Jake, the Byzantine Empire, you know, so that, that that's why the whole um, statue collapsed, all right. So jumping down, we're gonna go to the last last paragraph on the same page with the defeat of jewish and christian power in arabia the stage was now set for the rise of new of the new power on the world scene the new power was arabia and arabia you know the arabian empire you know um came basically from the ishmaelites all right let's go to the arabian empire Google that. Let's do this. All right, who were the Arabians in the Bible, right? According to the book of Genesis, Ishmaelites, right, are the descendants of Ishmael, the elder son of Abraham, and the descendants of the twelve sons and princes of Ishmael. Throughout history, the Ishmaelites have been associated with Arabs, more specifically northern North Arabians. All right, so most of these Arabians, you know, they, they descend from Ishmael, all right, you know, and not from Isaac. Right, so going back to Babylon, the Timbuktu, going to go to page 45 and, and continue here. All right, the Arabian Empire, with its new religion, Islam, established a superstructure of its culture on the ruins of the Roman Empire in the Middle East, Africa, and parts of Europe. So they, just, they ran off of this, this theme of, of Rome. All right. All right, so let's jump in down one paragraph. It says, when Muhammad was born... Many Arabs were still worshipping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. Alright, so they were idol worshippers. Alright, they didn't worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The Arabs possessed 360 idols, one for each day of the year. Alright, so this is what the Arabs were doing, the Ishmaelites were doing, right? Before Muhammad came on the scene. Alright? Now Muhammad, you know, you know, people big him up, but he was a hypocrite. He ran on a liar. So Muhammad was born AD 570. So he was born um, almost 600 years after the death of Yahweh Shai. All right. It says four years after the death of Emperor Justinian, he was descended from the tribe of Koresh and the family of Hashem. And I'll try to get some history on that maybe in the next video. All right. His mentality was pro prodigious. All right. And um, that will uh, would prodigious means remarkable. Uh, um, impressive create create in extent right his mentality right so he had a big mentality he was you had a ruling class mentality right so like yeah let's go back to 44 so he had a ruling class mentality right that was muhammad um in his youth he was never taught to read or write but his man imagination was superlative. And that word superlative just mean of a high quality or degree. Right? Because he had a he had a he had a great imagination. Imagine he could he imagined that the most high um would love would love Ishmaelites. Alright? When the Lord said, These are the hidden nations are nothing. Alright? So he said um his imagination was superlative. He had a great imagination. Had to be a great imagination. Muhammad was an extraordinarily handsome man, so he was, so he was a good looking man. And eloquent in motivating men with the power of words, which means what he was charismatic, all right. And that word charismatic, you know, is basically means um, exercising a compelling charm, which in inspires devotion in others, you know. So he he just basically had had, a, had an eloquent speech, you know. He had a way with words, right? And he just convinced people to follow him based on that. Right? There was no truth to what he was saying, right? Neither any truth to his writings, right? Because what any truth is writing is what he received from, from, he got from his scriptures. 
right? It says, um, let's go down, jump down here. Right. Okay, let's go. Which 45. Yeah, it says after um last paragraph, I'm gonna read from the one from the one, two, three, four, fourth line. It says on his business trips he met Jews, Christians, and other member and members of other sects. He interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religions. He frequented the environment of the Jews and their rabbis mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent ethnic culture. So omnipresent, you know, basically mean they would be widely or consistently encountered and widespread. You know, everywhere you go, you had, you had Israelites, you know, which proves that Israel is a scattered people, you know, Deuteronomy 20 and 64. All right. So you are omnipresent ethnic group because he could not read or write. His ears were attentive. You know, he was illiterate, right? His ears were attentive and keen to everything that the Jews related to him, right? Because he was taught by the Israel, Israelites, right? That's why Muhammad learned and extracted uh, much from the Jewish religion and compounded it with his new religion, Islam. So, you know, um, when, when, we, when, we, when we go into the word um, tenets, he interrogated them concerning tenets. A tenet is a principle or belief. A doc the doctrine generally held to be to be true, you know, especially um one held in common by a members of a movement or a group. So he was he was interrogating um Jews, both those who believed in Yahweh Shai as the savior, you know, and and um and also messianic messianic Jews, you know, so real the real Christians, All right? So a lot of his his doctrine, you know, when they say it was compounded, you know, to make his new religion, he he, he took parts from these different sects, right? You know, and put those parts together and made up his own religion. Alright? That's why a lot of the a lot of the ways of um of Islam are the same as um as being a, as the Hebrew Israelites. Alright? You know, so he 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 was a thief, he's a thief. Alright? He's a thief and he's a liar. Alright? Because if you go back in history and you do your research, you'll know that um there was a slave, there's a known fact, you know, and it's in the writings of Ibn Hashem, you know. He explained that um, the prophet, his prophet Muhammad, or so-called prophet Muhammad, used to often sit at the hill of Mariva, um, inviting a Christian, you know, who they say had, had some resources to teach him. He was a young Christian slave called Jabir, a slave of Banu El Hadrami, and they used to say they used to say basically that the one who teaches Muhammad most of what he brings is Jabir, the Christian, right? You know. You know, and you know, and it contradicts. If you go into the Quran, chapter sixteen, you know, verse one hundred one to one hundred four, it contradicts what it says, right, about the religious affiliation. All right, so this guy is this guy was a hypocrite, an imposter. All right, this guy is an imposter. All right, so um, let me go to page um, forty six. Page forty six, you know. Um, starting under the under the heading the first stage of the Islamic revolution, second paragraph. Uh, Muhammad spent many days in the hills outside of Mecca. He was immersed deeply in the deplorable conditions of his people, his people, of course, which is which is Ishmaelites, right? And he wanted to lead them away from moral turpitude and idolatry. It seemed to him that the angel Gabriel appeared. It seemed to him, so they say that the angel Gabriel appeared to him, but it seemed to him because why he was delusional, right? It seemed to him that the angel Gabriel appeared, commissioning him to articulate a new religion to, substance, to substitute for the old. Incidentally, Gabriel was the same angel who appeared in a vision to the Hebrew prophet Daniel, you know, which is the truth, all right? Because the Lord, the Lord speaks to the saints. He doesn't speak to the heathen, right? Muhammad gradually came to believe that he was a prophet and expounded his religion. So he came to believe that he was a prophet. He deluded him with his own self. He was deluded. Right? And he could look that word up. Right? And expounded his religion to members of his family. He went out to the holy temple to preach to the multitudes that gathered to worship the idols. With these words, 
the first phrase of the Islamic revolution began, right? You know, and he just said this, this phrase which meant, um, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. So he was praising him on his own self, all right? Now, when you go to the next page, you're going to read that, incidentally, by this time, the Hebrew Old Testament had been translated into Arabic and the Arabs were rapturously pleased to read about their great ancestors in the story of the Hebrew patriarchs. So before this, they didn't really have any writings. You know, they got their writings from the Israelites. All right? Well, you know, when the, when, the, when the Torah was translated. All right? This fact alone helped Muhammad to inspire in the Arabs the feeling of nationalism and racial pride because they had read in the Hebrew scripture that Ishmael was to become a great nation. So this, you know, you know, this is what this is this is what he, he played on, all right? The scripture. You know, and this just proves that only Ishmaelites really could become Muslims. You know, because it was based on Ishmaelites, you know. And it wasn't given from Yahabashim Yahushai. Alright? We're gonna go down to page 48. The topic is Islam and Judaism. Alright? The Prophet Muhammad adopted many principles and laws from the Jewish or the not innocent Jewish from the from the Hebrew Israelite religion, which is what the truth. First of all, the basic idea of monotheism, which is one God, which is the belief in one God, the Jewish, the Jew, the Israelite confession, confession of the unity of Yahweh. You know, basically Shema Israel Adonai Elohu Adonai El Edad. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Right? The Mohammedan slogan is as follows. La ilaha ila Allah, Muhammad Rasul Allah. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. Muhammad adopted also the main details of the Hebrew Israelite calendar, the Day of Atonement, the Sabbath, much of the Bible and narratives there, because he went, he, he had, they say they believe that the Psalms, the, the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, the Psalms and the and the um, and the Injil, which you call the Injil, the Gospels. Are true, all right, which is a cut to them, but we'll get to that in another video. All right, you know, much of the Bible and narratives from the Midrash and many points of ritual law, incidentally, of ritual law, slack here. Incidentally, the Jews pray three times a day facing the city of Jerusalem, and the Muslims, the true believers, pray five times a day facing the city of Mecca. All right, trying his best, Muhammad sought to convert the Jews. To his, his new religion but to no avail the jews were adamant and resisted to cheat the change the high esteem which the prophet held for the jews was transformed to enmity because he learned from the jews that's why he had them in high esteem right jabba was his teacher and he learned from other hebrew israelites while he was doing he was traveling you know you know but when he when the jews when the israelites you know you know refused to 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 to, to, to change to his islam you know, he had enmity with them, right? And instead of allies, he looked upon them as competitors, right? So Muhammad needed the confirmation of the influential Jews, because Jews were influential during that time period, to validate his mission. As all upstarts need the backing of someone influential, Muhammad therefore turned against the Jews and became their tormentor. So this man who said torment us, all right? He's a wicked devil, he's a heathen, right? So now I'm going to go to some scriptures here. Alright. Now I'm going to go to some scriptures. Let me go to um, first to Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 19. What did the Lord say? Right? Jeremiah 51 19 the portion of Jacob is not like them he is the former of all things and Israel is the rod of his inheritance the Lord Yahweh of hosts is his name his name is not Allah and Allah by the way is a Hebrew name you know it's not Aramaic it's Hebrew it's Hebrew all right and it just means power and that's not the name of the Heavenly Father the name of the Heavenly Father was only given to Israel right Verse 20 reads, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces of nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Alright? 
and you know that goes into Ish, the kingdom of Ishmael as well. Alright? Genesis 35 and verse 10, you know, it reads, And the Most High said unto him, Yahweh said unto him, my, my, Thy name is Jacob, thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel, right? Which is Yasharala in the Hebrew, Prince of Power, right? And the Most High said unto him, I am Yahweh Almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation, and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loin. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it, and to thy seed after thee, I will give the land. So the Lord didn't promise anything unto Ishmael. Right? The promised land was given unto Isaac. Right? That's the chosen lineage of the Lord. You know? And Jacob was called the prince of power, not Ishmael. Alright? You know? So that's just off. Alright? Plus the Lord only deals with a certain set of people. Alright? You need deals with Israel. Alright? Israel is the portion of his inheritance. Alright? Deuteronomy um, 2 and 8, right? Let's go there. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8. It reads, When the Most High divided to the nations the inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel, not Ishmael. Right? For the Lord's portion, Yahweh's portion, is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, not his people. Personal pronoun, right? Jacob is a lot of his inheritance, not Ishmael. Alright? It's pretty clear. Let's go down to second. Um, second Estrus. Because we're going to see that the, the heathen is nothing. Alright, second Estrus, verse 6. Verse 6 and 54. It reads, And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Right? This is Israel. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, Yahweh, because thou made us the world for our sake. So the whole world was made for Israel. Alright? As for the other people which also come of Adam, which is talking about Ishmaelites. Right? Including the Ishmaelites. Thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Alright, so they are nothing. And now, O Yahweh, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputing as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. And that's what Muhammad was doing, devouring Israelites. Put a lot of us to death. Alright? And you still want to be a, 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 a Muslim? Alright? But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, Thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. Right? You know how clear how much more clear can you get? Is Isaiah 40 and verse uh, 15. It reads Behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. Alright? So these nations, including Ishmael, are counted as a small dust, which means they are insignificant. They don't have any weight with the Lord. Alright? Verse 17 reads, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So they have this vanity, they are nothings. Alright? That's what Ishmael is. Alright? Nothing. Jeremiah 31 and 35, The Lord has blessed, blessed them because of Abraham, his, his, his loyal servant. Right, because it was his son. Jeremiah 31 and 35 said, Thus saith Yahweh, which gave her the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves therefore thereof roar, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Right? You know, so the Lord, the Lord never give up Israel, you know. 
Israel will never be forsaken. You know? Thus saith Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that, that they have done, saith Yahweh. No. Even though we done around, the Lord will never cast us out. That's the promise that He made. Alright? Now let's go to Joel 2. Verse 27, it reads, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your power. Right? So the Lord is only the power of Israel. And none else. He doesn't he, he doesn't they, they they not worship any Yahweh. They can't worship Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Right? It's not given to them. Lord say, I am the I am Yahweh, your power. Israel is talking about. Let me read that over Joel 2 and 27. And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your power, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Alright? So the Lord is only the power of Israel. And where, where they got this stuff from? Muhammad is a liar. Alright? Now let's go to Psalms 147. And verse 19 it reads, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Where are you seeing Ishmael? No. He had not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. So no, he didn't deal with them. He's not dealing with the Ishmaelites. Alright, so the Lord is, is listen, listen. The, 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 the religion of Islam doesn't matter to the Lord. Right? The Lord doesn't hear their prayers. All these Ishmaelites don't hear their prayers. Alright? But the Lord only dealing with his people. Alright, this is Psalms 78 and verse 5. Alright, it says, For he will eat, for he established a testimony in Jacob. Right? And Jacob was the son of who? Isaac, right, and appointed a law in Israel, not a law in Ishmael, right. So you only appointed the law in Israel, you know. So, so when when Muhammad picked up on his tool and tried to follow the laws of the Lord, he, you know, is they going off, right? It's not for them, which he commanded our fathers, right. So that's personal again, that they should make them known to their children. So the law was only given to Israel. So where, where Ishmael come with this, all right? You know? Alright? And they believe in the Psalms. So the same Psalm is cutting them. Alright? The Torah, the Psalms, and the Gospel cut them. You know? Hebrews 4 and 12, you know, the, the word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharp and ain't two-edged sword, roughly paraphrasing. Alright? You know, so they, this is not for them. The Psalms 148 and verse 14, it reads, he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, and the children of Israel are his saints, a people near unto him, praise ye Yahweh. So any Israelites are his saints. Alright? Ain't no saints from other nations. And we see that right here, Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Alright, so who made this covenant by sacrifice? Alright, the old, the so called old covenant, which is the same covenant that's binding up to now, an everlasting covenant. Only the nation of Israel, right? Only the nation of Israel made sacrifice on made a sacrifice unto the Lord. And we are going to show you that in the scriptures. First is Revelation 19 and verse 8, right? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And saints are who? They saw that in Psalms 50 and 5. The Israel. Alright? Israel. Let's go back. Yeah, gather my saints together unto me. Those who have made a covenant will be by sacrifice. Alright, so both the old covenant and the new covenant to come will be given to the house of Israel. Alright? That's, that's pretty, that's clear. Alright? You know, it's clear. Alright, let's go to Exodus chapter 24 from verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses, who is what? A descendant of Isaac. Alright? 
and Moses alone shall come near to your near Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh had said we will do. Alright, this is Israel, this is the covenant. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars and according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Alright? Okay? And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweshai. And that goes back to Psalm 50 and 5. He wants to, to sacrifice unto me. I just see the young men of the children of Israel. Let's go back to Psalms 50. And verse 5. Gather together my saints unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Alright, so who made the covenant by sacrifice? Only Israel. Alright. You know. And they have a lie. They have a lie in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the Quran, you know, in Surah. I believe it's Surah. Um, Asaf 6 you know saying that obviously Hawashai you know was a messenger you know who was he was the messenger who was to come after Moses and that going back to Deuteronomy 18 and, 5, and 15 which is a big fat lie again you know this doesn't speak about Muhammad right this is Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 15 and you know the, all these scriptures you know throughout the Old Testament prophesy about Yahawashai the coming of Yahawashai our Lord our Saviour our Savior, right? Personal pronoun, our, you know, Israel alone. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Yahweh, thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto thee him. Ye shall hearken, and, and you know, you know that word, brethren. You know, first of all, who the book of Deuteronomy is addressing? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 1 and let's see. Deuteronomy 1 and 1, it reads, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazarot and Dizahab. So only Israel he spoke to. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy 18, verse 1. It says, The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Verse 2 says, Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. Yahweh is their inheritance. And he had said unto them, You know that. And so this word brethren, this word brother, let's go into that word. And because ironically, and you'll see how it's the same word that they use in Deuteronomy 18 and um, I believe it's 16, 15 and 17, I believe. Alright, so that word is Ak. Ak. Strong's H251. Ak. Ak. It means brother, you know? Brother of the same parents, relative kin, same tribe. Alright? So that means a brother of, of blood. Alright? You know? Ishmael is a distant relative, but they're not blood. It's by blood. They're not every 12 tribes of Israel. Alright? So that just cuts, cool cuts them right there. Alright? Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 18 and um, I believe it's 16. Yeah. It says, According to all that thou desirest of Yahweh thy power in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my power, neither let me see the, this great fire any more that I die not. And, and Yahweh said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. Right? Verse 18 says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. And that word again is Ach. Ach. Which means brother. Here we see it here. Right? Strong's H251. Ach. Ach. Right, so it means brother. It's talking about Israelites, fellow Israelites. Alright? Right, so I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, them all that I shall command him. And Muhammad never spoke 
you know, all that was commanded of Moses, you know, and all that was commanded of, of, of Yahweh Shai. doesn't even speak. They speak about Yahweh Shai as being a prophet, but he speaks against what Yahweh Shai stood for. All right? You know? So, so he, he just falls in the category of a false prophet. Right? He's a heathen. First of all, he's a heathen. So a heathen is not a prophet of the Lord. All the prophets of the Lord were Israelites. All right? You know, and the new covenant isn't given to anybody else but Israel. So if you go into the new covenant, well, that's another cold cut for them. All right? Let me quickly go there. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. It says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, which is their minds, and will be their power, and they shall be my people. All right? You know? Let's go to Isaiah 42 and verse 6. It reads, I, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for, and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the, of the Gentile and Gentiles is he scattered. All right? You know, you, heard, you saw earlier in the book, Babylon, the Timbuktu, I read that um, Muhammad, you know, said that the Israelites were an omnipresent ethnic group. All right? So we were truly scattered. You know? It's, it's clear. All right? The Lord, the Lord doesn't like, the Lord doesn't like this heathen. All right? The Lord doesn't like this heathen. All right? Now, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a couple more scriptures and I'll close this out. Let's go to Genesis 17. And verse 16, because um, it's going to show who the child of the promise really is. Genesis 17 and 16 reads, And I will bless her and give thee a son. This is talking about Sarah. Right? And give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of, peop kings of people shall be of her. Right? Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear. Alright? And Abraham said unto Yahweh, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And Yahweh said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Alright? So, so, Abraham was pushing Ishmael, but the Lord said, No, Isaac. Alright? And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. So the Lord only blessed Ishmael because of his father, Abraham. I will make him fruitful. I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Alright? But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Alright? So that so that is clear here. Alright? Only Isaac, you know, the son of Abraham and Sarah, you know, you know, and, and that's why that's why Ishmael hated Isaac, you know. You know, and according to the, the covenant that the Lord made, um the covenant that the Lord made, alright, um Isaac was the first to be circumcised on the on the eighth day, as per the law, you know, according to the scripture. Because if you look here, um let me see if I go to Genesis 17. Verse 23. Alright, so um, let me see if I can find this. So lucky, just bear with me a moment, yeah? Yeah, Gen let's jump back. Genesis 17, verse 9. It reads, And Yahweh said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, Therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So that's the covenant is circumcision. And he that is eight years old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Alright? 
all right so so it put it clear here and let's now when we go to genesis 21 all right and verse 3 you know start of verse 2 right for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time at which Yahweh spoke unto him and abraham called the name of his son which was born unto him which sarah bare to him isaac and abraham circumcised his son isaac being eight years old as Yahweh commanded him so isaac out between isaac and ishmael isaac was the one who was circumcised on the eighth day as according to the law and the covenant all right all right isaac was the one all right ishmael was circumcised the same day as abraham you know i believe when he was 13 years old all right yeah look at here this is genesis 17 and 23 and abraham took ishmael his son and all that were born in his house and all that were bought with his money every male among the men of abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as Yahweh said unto them and abraham was 90 years old and in nine when his circum when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin and ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin so he didn't he didn't he wasn't circumcised you know even between the two of them as per the law and he still and the covenant all right as per the covenant all right you know so so although ishmael was circumcised you know and the covenant or would have, would have yes the covenant would have applied to all of abraham's offspring all right you know because being, being hebrews all right he wasn't circumcised on the eighth day you know so he to him wasn't given the full he wasn't didn't have the full promises you know the full covenant that israel only israel received you know because he is he's of the flesh you know and worth nothing all right so let's go to and that might be a hard pill to swallow for some of you but it's the truth this is romans 9 and verse 3 it says for i wish that myself were cursed from Hamashiach for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh this is apostle paul here who are israelites to whom puts in it the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises so what i mean what where are leaving space for for ishmael coming in there where where, where prophet muhammad come in there all right nowhere whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh their mashiach came who is over all Yahweh blessed forever amen all right verse 6 says not as do the word of Yahweh had taken none effect for they are not all israel which have israel because the lord didn't deal with the elect right but worse that the heathen right verse 7 says neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children so ishmael because ishmael of the seed of abraham he wasn't chosen all right but in isaac shall thy seed be called so not ishmael or any other the sons of abraham that is verse 8 says that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of the most high but the children of the promise are counted for the seed so these are ishmael these ishmaelites are the children of the flesh they're not the children of the spirit all right verse 9 says for this is the word of promise at this time will i come and sarah shall have a son all right yeah you know it's clear so hey you know you know I, I, i'm not gonna go too much deep in it now but pretty much it's straight pretty straightforward that hey the ish um muhammad and islam is a farce and a fake right you know it's it basically took root 1500 years you know after and the quran basically took 1500 years af after the um the bible was written Muhammad himself was born almost 600 years after the death of our Lord. Alright? So hey, you know, you do the maths. Alright? You do the maths. You know, and these and these um these most of these Muslims, you know, they they you know defend the Muslim religion. You know, um you know to defend the Muslim religion, you had, you had to basically um you had to take one or more of the following premises. One, either the Bible is the word of your hour word of the most high or is not all right two if the bible is the word of the most high because if you trap them there you say the bible is the word of the most high then the quran couldn't be the word of the most high because the quran contradicts the bible all right and three 
if the Bible is not the word of God, then the Quran is not, because the Quran quotes the Bible. So any way they look at it, they finish. So the conclusion being the Quran and Islam is not the true word of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. It's just like this plantation Christianity, they take pieces and they, they adopt parts. It's a compound religion and it's wickedness. Alright? So I'll end it there. You know, part look forward to part two. I pray that this lesson has been edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakodash, Wa Abad Babal Shalawam.